Welcome to Toffee TV. Today, I am joined by Everton winger Yannick Balassi, who is joining me, took the time out of his day to join us. So, Yannick, big thanks for uh, taking some time out to have a chat with us. No, nah, no worries, man. It's always a pleasure, man. Um, obviously, I've I've been away for a couple of seasons or whatever, but, you know, um, I thought just talking to you guys direct, you know, talking directly out of respect for um obviously Everton and every and everyone else you know I thought it'd be best that I talk directly to you know the the fans hub kind of thing because I feel you know um my game and everything just revolves around you know trying to I don't know impress the fans and that's just the way I've been and you know I'd like to give you like, obviously the, the first insight of what I've been kind of thinking you know and what's been going on how have you, just before we get into football, how have you found lockdown? Because yeah. this must be the strangest period in your I know you've had obviously an injury and we'll get onto that, but yeah. just in being yeah. being fit and just not being able to go and train or play footy, has it been so weird for you? To be fair, what I was locked down, I think two weeks before England went in lockdown in Portugal and yeah, so it's been it's been a while for me, you know. It's yeah. It, no, I don't feel like I'm injured again, but you know, it's just like going through them stages again where you have to do training and you're training along kind of thing. It's 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 been hard, but at the same time, obviously for the family and stuff, it's it's, it's been a bonus for the kids, I guess, because <laughs> I'm at home every day and they see me every day, kind of thing, you know, rather than you know, in and out, going training, coming back, have matches, having to stay over places and stuff. So now, I, I guess it's the best of both worlds. But you know, in general, as like a football player, yeah, hundred percent, been very hard, very hard. Have you, you know? got? But oh, I was going to say, have you got new no, ab but, admiration for your for your partner for all uh, for all the work she does when you're not there at training oh, and stuff? Hundred percent, you know, hundred percent. I try to go around places and just literally around the house and say, listen, I'm going to hide in this room, you know. <laughs> basically just stay there you know and the kids will basically come and find me they think like it's almost hide and seek so but yeah no i can't lie it's been it's been all right it's been all right yeah it's been a good like just just on your football career then obviously i was just looking before and you, you've obviously worked your way up to the the very top um you know yeah. started in malta and then plymouth and bristol city before you you got <laughs> to crystal palace and and obviously experienced the premier league with them i mean but was it a was it a, yeah. did you find it a huge step up from like Bristol City then to Palace in the Premier League? Um no, I wouldn't say so. You know, I think like playing in the, the lower leagues definitely, you know, got my feet on the ground and made me realise like how hard football really is, you know. So having to graft and come up was like, you know, gave me the mentality to to almost try to do better for myself always. So, for example, when I came from Malta, I went to Plymouth and, you know, I, I was there. Um, I signed for Plymouth, a two-year contract or whatever it was, and then um, ended up going on loan. I went on loan to Russian Diamonds in a conference until January, and then basically that same season, I went back, I went in, I, I got a loan move to... Um, Barnet, who, who were in League Two, you know. So for me, that was already like actually, I'm de I'm developing here, you know. I'm I've played the conference, half a season of conference, playing at Barnet. So it was different experience, but obviously it was playing football league where I was still contracted to Plymouth. End up going back to Plymouth again, and then went back to Barnet again. So I played another season in League Two, um, well half half a season, sorry half a season and then Plymouth ended up calling me back and I actually got to play in the championship. Right. But I think Plymouth were going down, so Plymouth got relegated um, to League One and then I ended up staying at Plymouth and basically played in League One, so that's how I played League One. So that was another kind of tick off my box kind of thing. Obviously, I did, you don't want to go through all of those stages, mm -hmm. but you know, it was those, you know, where it was it just seemed to happen with me so i ended up playing at plymouth for one season um had a great season and then went over to bristol city bristol city for one year so it was a bit in and out kind of thing of the team and for me it was just like i just wanted to play games nothing else but play games so that's the way i've always seen myself i know i've always been so 
you know, ended up moving to Crystal Palace, who were at the time bottom of the league or whatever, championship by four points adrift. And that same season got promoted into the Premier League. When you get promoted to the Premier League, then, you know, everything everything sort of changes, you know. So for me, it was just like, it's, it's a dream come true, you know, getting into the Premier League, first of all, because the journey that I basically took, I, I would have never thought, you know, that I was going to be where I am kind of thing. So, you know, I'm really grateful. And obviously at Crystal Palace, you know, I was working hard. And like I said, I had that push and, you know, the eagerness to always improve and do better for myself as a player and improve as a player. So it meant like changing my physique because I was one of those slim type of wingers that used to get pushed off the ball a lot. And uh, because of League Two and League One and Championship, I ended up developing my physique and then, in the Premier League, it almost felt like, not in a bad way, it just felt like, oh, I was a lot stronger than yeah. people without realising. But when you think I'm coming up to the Premier League and stuff, you think, oh, maybe it's going to be, the players are much stronger, but stronger in a different way. I think they're more, more fit and definitely more, more sharper and faster than what I've been playing against. But, you know, I got used to it and, you know, the um, story was kind of history, you know, I ended up coming coming to, to Everton, which was also a dream move, you know, because, you know, even playing at Goodison at those times, you know, you stand around and think, wow, you know, I'm actually at a big Premier League club, you know, I'm just looking around going, yeah, this is, this is actually the Premier League, like, welcome to the Premier League. And fortunate for you guys, uh, for us guys, you know, I ended up scoring my first goal in the Premier League against Everton. So, yeah, it's, for me, it's it, been made up, to be honest. Uh, you know, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't change anything regarding the come up and stuff because it's taught me a lot of lessons and you know a hard graft and fought to where I've got. And I've always realised like hard work is what gets you out of anything. So yeah, that's just been my motto all the way through. You always did well against us for Crystal Palace. <laughs> Noticed that us and Liverpool, you seem to like Merseyside. You come up and uh, give us a hard this time. Is what it is. <laughs> I thought I, I definitely, I definitely, you know, when I obviously when I moved and stuff, it was life changing for my family and everything, and you know I was made up. But I also did think, you know, I've had so much positive things up in Merseyside. You know, it can't go anywhere. It can't, it, it can't go anywhere else. You know, like I, if I play good against both of the Merseyside teams, surely, you know, like coming out, like it's, it's basically, basically going to kick on kind of thing, you know, but. Yeah. You know, things happen in football and it's unfortunate sometimes. How did you move to Everton come about? Um, I can't remember. It was a bit... bit it was Rom, Rom as well, you know. Obviously, Rom wanted me there as well. So, you know, that that kind of urged me. Because I was, I was like, to be honest, with Crystal Palace, it was, I loved my time there, you know. Um I, obviously, not in a bad way. I felt at that stage there, you know, they weren't really trying to, you know, go, go, go forward as in like, you know, push on. Where obviously Everton under all the other managers, you know, David Moyes, Roberto Martinez, you always felt they were trying to push for the top six. So for me, it was about the challenge. You know, I was easily comfortable at Crystal Palace, and I could have stayed there because I was more than happy and I was enjoying my football. But it was about the challenge, you know, and obviously things do come into mind like, yeah, I've done well in Merseyside matches and stuff. So, you know, I would have thought like it would have been a good um, place for me to come and, you know, um, kind of do my thing. So, yeah, obviously Rom, Rom helped in that as well, convinced me. And, you know, I was intrigued by the project with Ronald Koeman at that time. Mm. And we always knew Everton always pushing the top six, you know, um, and always trying to break in there. So it was a thing where, yeah, it, it was, like I said from before, it was a no-brainer to me, you know, whether or not I've been injured or whatever for the year or whatever happened. Before that, it was a no-brainer to me. And, you know, I would still look at it that way. I wouldn't change anything and say, oh, if I could change, would I change this? No, I wouldn't. That was just the way it was. And I'm so fortunate that I've had this injury, you know, but it is what it is. Yeah, I mean, you come in, started, well, you and Ron, obviously, you know, linked up really yeah. well. You scored your first goal at Burnley, all, although we lost that game, but you got off the score sheet and you were, you yeah. know, you'd had, I think you'd had five assists by the time you got the injury and Rom was quite happy with uh, a man, couple of them, one against Rom, West Ham. Uh, Rom, 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 Rom actually cost me, you know. He, I, I, him and Ross, to be honest, well, 
They could have given me that. I could have had eight assists before injury, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, 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 no, no, no. But yeah, no, obviously, I had a good link up with Ross. Um, Delafeo was there as well, and and Rom. And obviously, you know, playing against uh, um, one of one one of obviously the best fullbacks um, playing against him over the years and stuff in in Leighton Baines and mm. and and Shea, you know, that was good to actually be on the same team just to see you know how different it was you know compared to when I'm playing against them and stuff. So yeah, it was yeah, it was definitely definitely good for sure. Just before we go on to just before we go on to your injury. How did your relationship yeah. with Romelu Lukaku come about? Was that something that happened at Crystal Palace when he was at Chelsea? Or um, yeah, it, you know what? It was like it was like when we played against Everton, kind of thing, you know. And he'd speak to me in our native language, and then from there it was just like whenever we saw each other, it just kind of clicked, you know. And then I'm not gonna lie, he made me feel like so welcome into the changing room and settled in kind of quick, you know. And it was. Just, it didn't feel like I was doing a massive change. Mm. It made it feel like it was very smooth, you know. And yeah, part of the reason why I probably started off kind of quick as well because obviously I used to get these pep talks every day in the car about, oh, oh yeah, how much you giving me today, all kind of thing. Well, wait, mate, I've, I've given you, I've given you two or three the other day. You didn't put them away, you know. You're costing me now, <laughs> kind of thing, you know. But I've, 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 to be honest, I've never been kind of like a stat pad or whatever kind mm. of thing because I. I like to think, you know, my, my game revolves around, like, obviously creating space for others. And then, obviously, you know, I do have the power and strength and I, and I can score and I can assist. But I've never, I wasn't brought up that way kind of thing. I think I've always looked at the game very different. I, I like the era when, you know, you had the players like, I don't know, Henri, Ronaldinho, Bergkamp. You know, these kind of players that I was watching growing up was like, I didn't watch them to see that, oh, they scored five goals, where I think... Now the game has kind of gone, changed round into like revolving round stats. You know, mm. I I wasn't brought up, but like for me, I'd find it more interesting to make space for someone and the team recognise that I've done that and we end up scoring. You know, that's that's more joy for me than doing the other things. But equally, I know the game is about stats and I will play to that kind of thing. But I just like growing up, I've growing up and when I was young, I was actually just looking at what people like did. So there would be players like would would affect the game but wouldn't get like a start on the sheet, yeah, wouldn't yeah. get an assist. So, you know, so you know, I'm I'm not saying I'm that type of player fully, but like that was the kind of way like I sort of kind of saw myself playing because at the end of the day it's not like I scored like twenty twenty goals to move to Everton, I think like I, I I would like to think like they got me on the ability that I can obviously take on my man a bit speed, bring the team up the pitch, normally play against two players because one on one, you know, it, sometimes it, it could be a mismatch. <laughs> um yeah, and I and I like to set up my goals. But then obviously I thought like it was starting to click here when you have someone like Rom Ross playing and these guys are also taking up two and then I'm playing one and then, you know, it just felt like, yeah, everything was coming kind of easy. Yeah. But yeah, it was good. But definitely, definitely. Good. And then obviously the injury came, which was, uh, it, it was just such a, it was such a weird injury, wasn't it? I would have cared because I, I remember you going to the corner flag with the ball and you went in for a challenge and when you didn't get back up, you're thinking, <laughs> like, what's going on? Yeah, and then, I mean, Funny enough, I swear Gary never said I dived or something like yeah, that. Yeah, he said you went <laughs> down or... Yeah, yeah. Wow. Might have to come for him for that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm joking. Um, but yeah, no, obviously, I, I, I tried to actually get up and play, mm. but then I just felt like, whoa, you know, that this feels way different to anything that I felt because I, 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 I like to think my, my pain threshold is very high, you know, and mm. I'm not just going to walk off... The Chen, you know, it's only until I started walking up the stairs back up into the change room, I didn't really feel it. But then when I put my leg up on the bed, that was something else, yeah. you know. And you you wake up in the morning and you hope like you that pain's gone away, but the pain was still there, and I was like, oh man, this this is this is this is, this feels like a, a long one, mm. you know, because the pain normally. No, I don't know. I like to think I'm a superhuman sometimes. So I wake up in the morning and yeah, it's gone. It's not there. It wasn't going anywhere. No. And, you know, obviously 
when I got the news and kind of stuff, it's, it's 10 months to a year or so, that, yeah, that was, that was like the shock of my system because, you know, um, I, I like to think I was that player that looked after my body well and kind of stuff, but, you know, sometimes these things kind of just happen and, yeah, it was a disappointing time, you know. Um, it, considering as well, that game there, I think United, I was actually doing well mm. and hitting, that felt like I was coming into what I need to be showing, you know, um, who, who I wanted my identity, what I wanted you guys to kind of see. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'll, when you were out in, obviously you're injured and you're training, trying to get back. I mean, how difficult was it for you? Because obviously um, we ended up changing managers. So the fella who brought you in is sacked. Mm. You know, he's gone out the yeah. door and, you know, David Undred had it for a few weeks and then Sam Allardyce coming in. What's that like? You're, you're doing your rehab and trying to get back and then, What's that like for a player with someone who's brought you in has then gone out the door? And obviously, Rom had left as well, hadn't he? So, the time yeah, you yeah, the time you've been out, there was a lot of change, wasn't it? Yeah, there's obviously there was a lot of change and stuff. Obviously, that 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 hit me really hard, obviously, because he, like the manager, you know, in, he, he, there was reassurance, you know, that he kept giving me this reassurance that you know, don't worry, you know, like kind of take your time, just make sure ready to come back strong kind of thing and obviously by the time you come back he's gone mm. kind of thing and you know, it's a different thing and yeah. you know it, I, and that's how football is unfortunately but you know everyone's fighting for their place so you know um in, in, no no prisoners mate no prisoners especially at our club you know um there's no there's no prisoners especially in training you know so when obviously um david unders took over um i come back and i played the uh, I was coming. I was just about to come back, and I played some. Uh, I played two under twenty three games, and basically, come back when Sam Allardyce took over. So yeah, yeah it was. It, it it wasn't different. It was just. It was just a bit strange, you know. I, I to be honest, I even got. I even. I remember even getting a letter by, by by the, by the by the chairman just saying that obviously because I was injured and you know we're doing a lot of signings not not to worry and stuff you know like just to concentrate on coming back well mm-hmm. and stuff so that was that was that was great as well that 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 gave me a little lift as well to be honest yeah. you know and then when I came back obviously I don't know we, we weren't in a good period at that time you know um no actually no we we, we was we was we was we was in a good period so well we were okay we, when big, we were all right when big Sam <laughs> Well, we was all, we was all right, yeah. but you know, obviously yeah. that time there, I don't I don't think like we we had an experienced winger on board. I think if correct me if I'm wrong, I think Theo came in the month January that January after. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, you know, obviously for me, um, maybe may, maybe I might come back a bit too early. I'm not I'm not sure, but you know, it, it, it's the best of both worlds because obviously, I know myself. I've come up from. You know the bottom. I've come up from the conference at League Two, League One Championship. So I know when I can feel like I can play. I'm not going to say, "Oh, let me wait two weeks or whatever." I, I'm going to want to do it on the on the spot because that's just my character, you know, and and just just the way I've I've been. Unfortunately, in my career, I, sometimes it can be good, sometimes it can be bad. But you know, I like to think I'm an I'm a, and I'm I'm an honest person regarding that aspect of you know the game. Mm. So you know, I end up back and you know um i might and i might not be 100 percent right but you know at the time it, it 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 was a buzz coming back you know it was a buzz there's, there's no lies about that it was a great buzz coming back you're just being around the boys training again with like bodies around because obviously you're doing a lot of training alone mm. in the kind of so it's, it's, it's it was a difficult moment but you know equally you know it is what it is at the same time yeah, I was going to say that because I remember you, you come back against West Brom away, didn't you? Started the game and done quite well. Yeah. And I remember we we had Liverpool in the cup. I think you played really well there. We, we got beat late yeah. on. What you played? Yeah. So so yeah, I, I think what so I came back on box, box boxing, boxing, boxing day. Boxing, yeah, boxing yeah. Day, boxing day, and then it was West Brom, Liverpool. Mm. Manchester, no, Bournemouth. Bournemouth, yeah. Manchester United, then Liverpool in Tottenham the cup, Arsenal. Yeah, Tottenham and Arsenal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, it, it, to be to be honest, I was looking at it and I was like, "Wow, we actually got like the top five mm-hmm. in the space of like I don't know two weeks or something mm. like that." 
of playing against the whole top five. So for me, it was like, oh, I'm buzzing to be back. But honestly, like, when I'm thinking about it now, I hit a brick wall at one stage, I think, you know. And, you know, that's when my probably my performance started to really dip because some of the games I thought, wow, actually, I'm, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back, I'm mm. back. But then the next game I'm thinking, ah, I'm, I'm kind of way off it, you know. But I'm not going to say no because I think I'm way off it. I'm still going to go out there and try and do what I do. But I, I might have done myself, like, maybe a little bit of an injustice, you know, mm. rather than, you know, sometimes, you know, obviously not recognising that I come back from a year out, you know, play one, sit out to play one but you, you, you can't do that in football like mm. who's ever done that in football you know I should say this place is up for grabs so you're always going to want to put yourself up on the front line to fight for your position and that's just been me and you know I might not be ready but you know I like to think some of them games I did well and you know I shown what I can potentially do and bring back to the team. But, mm. you know, yeah, it was, a, it was a tough period for the club, 100% as well. I think. Know, for, for the team, it was a tough period. But we lost. We, we lost we lost against Liverpool in the Cup, unluckily. Then um, United beat us, I think, Zlatan scored. And um, Tottenham, yeah, that, that game there. Yeah, we yeah, were terrible. At, from, yeah, we were bad at Spurs. Yeah, yeah. And Arsenal, we were bad at we Arsenal there. as well. And <laughs> Arsenal, Spurs and Arsenal. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then after, I think I, I come out the team then, you know, and yeah, but yeah, yeah. It's, the, it's, it's so, uh, it's, it's a period. I was going to say, it's so difficult, isn't it? You come back off a long injury, you're probably not ready to play every week because you've had such a period of time, up, but your adrenaline yeah. wants to play. And you, yeah. then you play and you're not at where you should be and then people will judge you on that, but you still, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. different. It's so such a difficult one, isn't it? No, yeah, yeah, it's it's unfortunate, but it, it, it's football at the same time, you know. Mm. And you know, if I if I if I went back now, I don't know. I don't know if I would change. I don't know if I would change. But like, I don't know if I would change anything if I went back to that moment. Yeah. But you know, because at the end of the day, the joy of playing on the field again, you know, and playing against those teams just to see where I'm at, because straight away that would give me an indication mm. of where I'm at when I'm back from my injury, and I'm saying, okay. I played against um, Liverpool. Played against Robertson, and you know the uh, no offense, but the fan, their, their fans were sort of happy that like he sort of had a good game against me, kind of thing. I'm saying, whoa, you guys are buzzing. I've only come back, <laughs> been back for like two weeks or so. Like, <laughs> give me a give me a breather, like you know. But <laughs> it's what it is, you know. Yeah. Uh, but it showed me as well, like where I was at, you know, and I felt like I was at a good stage that time there. But then when the adrenaline sort of comes out, you hit a brick wall. Mm. And yeah, I'm I'm one of those honest players. I say yes, and at that time I hit a brick wall. What you the, know, and it is, it is. Yeah, I mean, we got to the end of that season and obviously Sam Allardyce yeah. went. And were you, were you a bit disappointed with... Do you feel as though you were given a fair go by Marco Silva? Or... Do you, or or how do you view that? Because you you then went off on loan, didn't you, to to Villa? Were you not were you not right in the to, summer, or were you feeling the injury, or what happened? Mm-hmm. No, to be to be honest, like with with with, with that, obviously, um, when I was when so if I go back to the timeline of events, you know, obviously the, when Sam Allardyce was there, you know, where I wasn't strong enough in my legs and in myself, I don't know, I, I could probably get a picture of you to see to show you the difference, kind of thing, mm. you know. Um, my my leg kind of you know my knee would kind of swell up you know and and i'd have to spend like the whole day or day before games you know i remember uh the day before games i would have to like be there icing my leg you know going in hot on court so sometimes you'd stay at the training ground till six o'clock just to make sure i was out on that field the next day you know like six o'clock like to make sure i was out on the field the next day because Obviously, I didn't want to give up my place mm. and I wanted to start and I wanted to play. So, when it came when it came to the end of the season, obviously, I'm thinking, yeah, I'm normal now. I'll finish the season. So, generally, as a footballer, I'd think I've come back from injury. I've been back playing. I've had some games. I've finished some games. I've had some good games. I've had some up and downs, which is which is normal. I think in total, I played about I don't know, I had about eleven starts and three or four or five subs appearances, you know, mm. off the bit. Which for me, like I would have never thought I would have got. To be honest, 
if I'm looking at where I was with my injury, I thought, nah, no chance. Because the, the injury was basically career fair. And I was saying, no chance. You know, play about 15 games towards the NC, no chance. Mm. That's not happening. But I managed to do that. So that was already a bonus. Then I, then obviously came came to the summer. Um, pre-season came along and, um, you know, I had the, the same problem basically with my leg. So what, what happened was like, because I didn't have the strength in it, which I didn't realise at the time, you know, because I didn't have the strength in it, mm. my knee would swell up every time I went on the field kind of thing. So I'm thinking, surely now, it's been, it's, it's been about, it's been about, you know, 10 to 11 months since, you know, um, I've had an up, whatever, I should be going back to normal, but it wasn't that, it was that I had to maintain my strength in that, because it got to a point where in the season, when I hit a brick wall, I was playing, I was that tired, I was thinking, where the gym work is the most, probably the most important mm -hmm. at the minute, what well, was at that time, the most important, I was like, oh, I'm way too tired, I can't do the gym, so then, when I'm doing the gym, when I'm not doing the gym, what was happening was, my leg muscles were deteriorating because I was that tired. I thought I just need to recover for the next game kind of thing because I wanted to play. So I didn't know any better kind of thing. Yeah. But as that was happening, my leg was deteriorating the muscle and that was making me lose strength. So that would affect performance. It's not to say it's an excuse, but that's just that's what was one of the pictures. That was, that's what's happened. That's one of the pictures. So basically when I come to preseason, I was still in that same state. So I basically basically did a day and my leg swelled up and that day that I did basically I was basically playing let's say I was playing with one leg if one leg can jump 18 centimeters the other leg was jumping nine and a half which was like less than half so mm. think about pitch if I'm on the pitch and I jump up and land on that one it could it could it, it, you know it's got the potential to go again mm. so when I realized that I basically had to go to the manager and say, listen, um, I don't know if anyone's informed you, but um, this is the script and um, I'm basically kind of letting you know, like, I don't think I can finish the pre-season kind of thing. Mm. You know, because I did the day and my leg kept swelling up. So what happened is if I would have, if I would have kept carrying on, it would have been, it would have been harm basically on my, on myself kind of thing and on my leg. Mm. And I would have been in the stages where I was doing during the season to try and play the games six o'clock in the evening, doing the hop, using the facilities to to basically um, slow down the swelling on it or yeah, yeah. pad it down, you know. So, you know, it ended up being that. Um, obviously, I did. He, he didn't really get to see me after that, and I did. I didn't. I did. I didn't get my. Uh, I didn't get a, a crack of the whip, and you know, towards so. So then I think I think a, a new physio comes in, um, a new physio comes in, and I start working on just basically bulking and getting confidence in that leg again. Yeah, yeah. You know, because to go from playing games against Liverpool, United, and those to like back to like I need to get bulk in my leg to have confidence again. It was crazy because I thought I'd done all the hard work mm. there. Yeah, yeah. You, know, you think just in general you you done all the hard work there, so. It was like it was like okay, um, I had to do that, and then basically by the time, by the time um, the way the way I kind of looked at it, it was like you know what, um, obviously if the manager doesn't fancy me or I'm not in the plans, it is what it is. It's it's his kind of thing, but yeah. I need to sort of have a a platform potentially where I can go and play games. Mm. You know when I come. When so big, because obviously it was going to take about eight weeks or something like that to think. So I would have still been in the, the what's it called? And the way it looked like, I don't know. It just seemed like, you know, it didn't fancy me for whatever reason. I don't know. You know, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe you might have watched the, the last season's games and I don't know. You know what I'm just saying? It could happen. Managers come in with different ideas and different plans and I understand that. Um, but at the time, I, I needed to basically get a... A platform, you know, hopefully to try and play games, which which became like Aston Aston Villa kind yeah. of thing. To go, well, um, so when so basically, I, I came on ten times for Aston Villa playing twenty minutes. Like, All their fans are probably thinking, what's going on here, 
what's going on? How, how can we get this guy from the Premier League here? <laughs> and he's coming on and play, I'm playing 20 minutes for 10 games in a row because no one didn't understand what was going on. But obviously the club did. Yeah. And uh, myself. And it was the best way to get back the confidence in back playing. I ended up starting and had some lovely, I had a lovely time there. It was good. Yeah. And yeah, and that, that was basically it, you know. And then went off to Anderlecht as well. Done really well there, didn't you? Had a really good yeah, so, second half so, of the so, season. So, and, so Anderlecht basically, um, you know, what, what happened, Anderlecht, I, I, I ended up coming back to Everton uh, because I, I, I feel like, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't there with myself at Villa yet, you know, mm. and you know, where they were, where, where they were, where they were pushing for the kind of pushing for the Premier League at the time. For me, it was, you know, it was almost like it needed to be a personal uh, agenda where I needed to feel confident, fully confident in myself because I was asking questions about myself whether I could finish a 90 minutes anymore, mm. you know, and you don't want to, as a footballer, and no footballer wants to get to that stage after injury, you come in and ask yourself if you can finish a game of 90 minutes, you know, and that wasn't because I was getting taken off at 60, it was just, I just needed a platform that could get the confidence back to finishing games again yeah. and being in full confidence in my body and myself and obviously my knee. And yeah, I went to Anderlecht and I, I got that love. I got that love, you know, I kind of felt like, you know, they, um, I got the love that, you know, basically um, I, I got when I, when I first joined Everton, you know, where mm. they, if you go and take the bat on and, you know, try to do your thing. And yeah, and, and I excelled and I enjoyed my time there as well. It was very good, you know, obviously another different experience. I never expected that I'd be going out on loan like this, but, mm. You know, like I said, like from the from the get go, the start of all of this, I've been, I've been, I've always been that type of player that wanted to play games and you know and and prove myself and yeah, because obviously I've come up from um, from the um, bottom to the top. So you've had obviously sporting as well. So where are you now? I mean, yeah. how, how are you feeling now? I mean, I saw you get sent off for sporting for. <laughs> For the most oh. the most ridiculous red you know, card I've seen for a while, to be fair. You, you know, at Sporting, oh man, Sporting, Sporting was a bit crazy, to be honest. Um, mm. If I thought if I thought England was crazy, then over there was something else. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, that was that was different because, like, I signed and the manager that basically told me the plan about what he's gonna do and stuff. Uh, another Dutch manager, funnily enough, um, he got. He got sacked the next day that I was there, so that was like, oh, whoa, what, what, what have I, what have I come to, kind of thing, you know. Mm. Um, but no, prior, prior to sporting, obviously, I, w I was working the whole summer. My intention w was to come back and show um, the gaffer at the time, Marco Silva, what I can do. Mm. I had the Afcon, um, and then yeah, come back, and it was basically sort of the, the same thing that was last summer, you know. Um, basically kind of got that message, you know, long story short that, you know, um, yeah, so I didn't really get a chance, you know, I've, mm. I haven't trained with the, um, with the, with the first team, I guess, in over two years, you know, two years or so. So, you know, I, I don't, I, for me personally, I look at it as like, how, how can you really get judged like that? Especially, you know, um, in the conditions that I've, that I've kind of, um, um, what's it called, gone through in the past kind of thing. Mm. But, you know, like I said, I, uh, I'm not. I'm not one of these guys that are gonna be out here complaining about it. You know, I just try to do my work and try to make sure you know my ability is talking more than what I am doing. You know, so I prepared the whole camp that summer as well, just to make sure I was in tip-top form. And I felt like I was going in tip-top form there. Mm. You know, and then just get told, you know, hey, uh, you, you're not in the plans or whatever. Not even I, I. I don't think I. Not even get told to be honest. It's 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 one of those ones where no one's not even said a word really, and mm. you know you just you just put yourself away from the first team, and you know you, know, you really and truly it, it's 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 hard to describe, but it's a situation that's been through, and I think it's a situation that's made me stronger as a person. I guess you know, um, but saying that my upbringing and stuff like that, just coming up through the leagues, you know. Um, that kind of stuff, they, they don't really phase me, you know, because I know what hard work does at the end of the day, you know, because when when your odds out to 
become a Premier League footballer or whatever, you know, and you, and you do that, that's that's just a dream come true and a bonus in itself. So then anything else from there, is, you know, you kind of look at it as a bonus, but equally as well, I do want to prove myself, you know. So where are you up to now then? Are you fit? Is your knee fine? Are you, are you ready, fighting fit to, to, you know, to have a go this pre-season? You know with, with that, like, right now, I'm not, like, the condition, I know I can feel it. I know what I'm in. I know what I'm doing, um, as in when I'm running and stuff. I know what I'm sort of looking at, you know. And now, for me, like, it's it's one of those. I'm ready, I'm ready to, to, to fight for the shirt and fight for my position, you know, because, honestly, through all of this COVID stuff and all the all the stuff that's been going on, obviously, um, it's only it's only it's, I feel like it's only brought me closer to the fans, you know, um, it, you know because obviously they probably thought this guy is it's been away or whatever or just been on loans kind of thing. But I feel like you know they, there's a little connection there, and I just want to show that you know um, I'm ready to fight for the team and fight for the cause, you know, because you know that's all I've been thinking about really. I've, and I probably, honestly, I probably made up my mind about much, you know, that, you know, it's that time where I need to fight for what I kind of think. So I, I, I never like, I never like to think, leave things unfinished and all, and all of that. And obviously playing at Sporting this year, playing, playing in New Europa as well, which, you know, was good getting into the last fight to ended up going out, but, you know, um, when we shouldn't have, but you know it, it is what it is. But all it, all of these experiences, you know, have just made me even um, value just like you know what what I've been trying to do the, the the last two two years or so, which is obviously get fit, get fit, and come and prove prove myself, you know, because I don't want to prove it if I'm not in the right condition, and I feel like I'm in a, I'm in that condition where you know I can I can. I can basically fight for my position and fight for the course, hopefully get given the chance, you know, and that's what you can hope for. But, you know, it's football and you never know what could happen. And, you know, I understand that managers and stuff got um, different plans. So, yeah. I mean, Everton have got now another new manager for you to try to uh, to get yourself in front of. In Carlo Ancelotti, who's obviously uh, an incredible name in world football, isn't he? And the club, mm-hmm. have, club have done incredible to get him. So I guess for you, mm-hmm. You know, there's three games to go and then there's going to be a very short pre-season this summer with, mm-hmm. with what's gone on. So it's uh, the opportunity to get, you know, to get back, get with the first team and, and have a real good go at, uh, at, you know, proving yourself a guest to him and, and seeing if there's a, if you can get back into the squad, maybe. Oh, that's, that's obviously, that, no, I'm not even, I'm not even bantering, but like that's, that, that would be, that would be the dream because obviously you're coming in you're back training first team back in a in in a good environment, and you know on uh, um, under a manager that's you know world class basically, and just just out of curiosity, you know I I'd, I'd love to see like what he kind of said how, how he'd be able to like I don't know help my game or whatever you know what I'm trying to say because mm-hmm. you it's, it's uh, it's never too late to do anything. I don't think you know. Just just in life and just in general, as as a human being, I always think you know, if you put your all in, you know, the right um, the right outcome always turns up eventually. So yeah, hopefully you know that's the, the um, hopefully that happens. You know, because it'd be yeah for me, obviously working under someone like that that I, I haven't worked. Um, under any any manager of that caliber before, so yeah, it, you know it's great, great. I, I'm sure all the boys are buzzing as well. You know, right now, you know <laughs> they're enjoying. <laughs> the, the thing is, is you know the, this summer will be different probably to any other one, Yannick. Given you mentioned it before, yeah. the COVID thing and a lot of football clubs saying there's not as much money to spend and not money going round and whatever. And it's an opportunity, isn't it? I guess for players who, especially for someone who the manager's not seen. I think for the likes of yourself, you've still got a year left, I think, at Everton. Mm-hmm. And the opportunity is there to go and improve yourself. And who knows, football football throws things up at times that, you know, opportunities and it's whether you can grasp them. And you know that better than anyone having come through mm-hmm. all of the divisions to yeah. play in the Premier League. So, you know, the opportunity's yeah. there. Hopefully you get it and you can get yourself in front of them and, 
and show that you you're back, you know, as strong as you were before the injury. Because that's, that's, that's the, what you want to prove, isn't that, it? That's that's my aim, obviously, you know, and yeah, um, that's what I'm trying to do, you know. I'm just trying to just trying to stay stay fit and ticking over and. Yeah, God, God willing, now um, I'll be able to train with the, the first team and meet obviously the manager and stuff. So yeah, I'm looking forward to just trying to do that. And yeah, hopefully back in the next six months we'll be having another convo like this, and we'll be like, yeah, look, look where we've kind of come. So yeah, hopefully that's the aim, anyways. You know, that'll be lovely when you've just terrorised Liverpool like you used to for Palace in a blue shirt for us uh, this time. We'll be that'll be lovely. Let, let, let me try and train first. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know, but um, yeah. it's all a... Yeah. Yeah, what, I mean, I've just we've noticed lately just a little bit, and obviously with COVID and probably because you, you haven't yeah. been training and all that, you've been on mm-hmm. Twitter, you've been engaging with Evertonians, and more importantly, you've been giving Liverpool a bit of a... some Liverpool fans a bit of stick as well, I mean... Say you know <laughs> when you're getting accounts made in 2019 and 2020, and then claiming they won the league, man, you have to confidence, <laughs> surely. You know, just just on a normal, just on a normal thing. Because obviously, I like to, I also like to think I'm like I'm a normal, normal civilian kind of thing, you know, regarding that kind of aspect. And I have, and I kind of have banner. Yeah, sometimes it might go wrong and stuff. Where obviously, if you're not performing and stuff, but you, you know that as a player yourself, you know, and that's the that's the good things with the football. As we see, we know we know we're missing the fans right now. We're missing the fans in the stadium, right? Mm. You know, if the fans had been in the stadium that day, we would have beaten Liverpool for sure. Mm. You know, and whether or not they've gone on and win, win the league, that would still be good for us moving forward yeah, because yeah. obviously we know we know where the club are trying to go. So yeah, you've all. I mean, you've always been. You've all I've noticed you've always been like quite engaging on Twitter. I remember years ago tweeting it after you you were playing for Palace and you'd done some mad trick and scored some goal and I remember saying, I'll oh, come to Everton or something and you'd favour it. This is when you were at Palace, which is mad, but um yeah. many mo- yeah, oh, like, wow. ages ago, twenty something like twenty thirteen or something. I'm gonna have to look that up then. But look it up, yeah, have a look it up. Um one of the other things as well, I wanna has anyone ever said to you about being more direct? Because you like to do 80-12 FIFA skills, don't you, when you're running a players sometimes? Oh, man, like, <laughs> honestly, honestly, like, <laughs> I, I, feel, I feel like, I feel like I'm going really direct. I don't know, what kind of direct are we talking about? Like, equivalent to which players now? You know when you, you know, knock it past the defender? I thought I, I, thought I was really direct. Like, when, you, I would, I, when you knock it past the defender and you've left them for dead, just cross it. <laughs> oh, to, to be fair, you know that that, that comes uh, that comes with a bit of experience, uh, yeah. but you know I'm only messing. Move, but that's my game now. Oh, it's no. good, man. It's all good. Man. Wait, what about? To, to be fair, room room would get on to me actually. Maybe you know what it is as well. When you when you come back after a year, yeah, yeah, and yeah. you're playing, yeah, yeah. Obviously, you've been watching yourself and kind of things there, and you just try to do the things that you you was doing before. So, like, I don't know. I don't know. It's mindset, innit? But, like, yeah. I'm, a bit, I'm a bit older and I know now. So, I'm only right. Yeah. What about that trick <laughs> when you're for Palace, when you had it on your foot and flicked it over your head? That one of you, uh, that's got to be one of your favorite. I think it might have been Spurs. Was it Spurs no, where you've done the, some the, outrageous the skill? Only, honestly, I, I think, like, I think, I think my 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 favorite, like obviously not skills wise, but just I think my my favorite game. Honestly, I'm not even bantering, and I'm not saying it because it's 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 Liverpool, but it's it's actually Steven Gerrard's last game, and I didn't score that game. This is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, like, you won three one though. Get no, I, I I I didn't get no assist that game because obviously when I passed it, it deflected and hit off someone. Obviously Zaha ended up scoring, but like that was that was my favorite game. Not not because of that though, but. But, but because of obviously getting a round of applause when I was coming off, that yeah. like that was like okay, like I've been playing Premier League football for these kind of moments because that's what I've been watching up growing. So Definitely. yeah, but no, it is, it is that's it is, it is what it is. Yeah. Let me just before I let you go because I know you've given us loads of time today. But do you still yeah. do you still speak to Rom? Yeah, all the time, man. Do you all the time? Any any chance any chance he come back? <laughs> Who? <laughs> Well, you know what? You never know, innit? It's one yeah. of those ones. You actually never know, you know. But like, he, yeah, he's he, 
you, you can see he still loves the blues, man. Yeah. Come on. He's a good, good lad. And yeah. then what about just what about after your career? Because I know you've been, I've seen you on Instagram with uh, encouraging kids to send the tricks into you and stuff like that. Do you think you might go into coaching? Is that something that interests you, um, or have you not? Have you just not you know thought what? about it's, that? It's, it's, like I, I I like a bit of coaching. Um, maybe maybe when I'm older, maybe. But like I I do like I do like the thought of like training kids and developing kids. I yeah, like yeah. that because obviously the way I've come, I ain't come through no academy. So mm. you know, I probably might have an an orthodox way of teaching. But you know, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do. I, I I I don't mind that. You know, I don't. I actually don't mind that. So yeah, obviously my platform and stuff will take the stage. You know, that was basically trying to it just help with the whole COVID thing, yeah. having kids in, and doing the right things, you know. And, and enjoying to stop themselves. The, the, the yeah, and enjoying themselves, yeah. obviously. I'm feeling free. So I didn't yeah. want to feel like they're crazy under pressure or whatever to do stuff. So, But it's been good. It's been good. I, I, I'm still doing it. I'm still doing it. I've just been training a lot, a lot more than um, I was at that time there. Yeah. So, you know, it's... It's it's been a bit it's been a bit hard, you know, and obviously football's been on, so everyone's concentrating on the football right now. But yeah, it's not it's not gone. I'll still do I'll still do some when I get time, and obviously give people the the whereabouts and you know when to what time to come on and stuff. Yeah, I can't I can't have you here without just quickly asking you about the uh, the Black Lives mm-hmm. Matter movement that's gone on, and we're seeing yeah. in the, well we're seeing it everywhere fantastically. Mm-hmm. We're seeing it here in the Premier League. I mean. It's such yeah. an important thing, I think, that we continue to to keep that going. I mean, what what what's your take being on it? Just very quickly. No, I think obviously it's a it's a good movement, and you know, uh, to be honest, I do think it's it's about time regarding that kind of aspect, you know, because you know sometimes you know there is things that are unfair out there, but you know, I I, I do support the movement, and 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 it's good that the Premier League and the clubs are making an effort to to do a little bit more and make more awareness, you know, and, you know, can't really ask anymore, can we? Mm. No, I think it, you're right, it's it's long overdue. Listen, Yannick, I want to say a massive thank you for taking time out. You're there. I know you're, you're ready to go and do yeah. some physical stuff, so we've kept no, it. No, no, I've, I've, I've done Have I've you done, done, done your training? Already, yeah, I've done the physical stuff. <laughs> no, but hopefully, yeah. listen, I hope you get that audience with Carlo Ancelotti and you get your opportunity to get back in training and show them what you've got and hopefully, hopefully get yourself back in. Willing, man. Thank, you very much. Thank you very much for taking the time out. It's been an Good absolute time. pleasure yeah. to speak to you. You too, mate. No worries, man. Take care. Take care. Please. Thanks, Yannick. Cheers. Cheers. Bye. A massive, massive thank you there to Yannick Balassi for taking time out of his day and joining us on Toffee TV. Let us know what you think in the comments below about Yannick. Should he, does he deserve another chance to, uh, to impress Carlo Ancelotti? Uh, this summer. Make sure you subscribe, give the video a thumbs up and if you want more videos join us over on Patreon. See you later.